While one part of the scientific world is struggling to fight the SARS-CoV-2 virus, institutes like the European Virus Archive in Marseille are making sure pathogens like it still exist. The road to defeating a virus can be long and full of obstacles. For that reason, a strategy based on sharing experience and scientific data at an international level is crucial. A virus biobank and COVID-19 data platform are two examples in Europe of this approach to fighting the pandemic. Twelve years since its launch, the European Virus Archive has become one of the most important databases in the world. It holds more than 3,000 products, including viruses, test substances and other types of material. This collection is a virtual collection. The idea was not to put all the viruses in the same place like a Fort Knox of virology. The viruses remain in each laboratory. This non-profit EU project makes it possible to rapidly supply scientists with the knowledge and material they need during a virus-related emergency. When the coronavirus appeared in China, our coronavirus researchers in the EVA organization immediately saw that this virus was one of the SARS family. And they quickly developed a diagnostic system to detect the virus in patient samples. The Marseille-based institute brings together nearly 40 cutting-edge labs in human, animal and plant virological research. Its online catalogue allows users to have access to genetic material and other various products. The coronavirus pandemic has led to a rise in online traffic. In just two months, requests for diagnostic kits and viral strains have matched what was received in the previous four years. When you have an emerging virus and there is very little data available about it, it's very important to be able to compare it with other existing viruses from the same family. So the biobanks are useful in that sense, as they allow us to confront what's new with what already exists. The virological material is sent by research centres, laboratories, universities and specialised companies. Here it's tested, certified and filed in an online catalogue, along with in-depth information that's key for the scientific community. We're increasing the amount of information through cell culture techniques. Using cell cultures, we're able to grow the virus, produce it and distinguish it. Distinguishing is what we call sequencing to get the complete genome sequence of the virus. This enables us to associate this virus with a known virus species. When an epidemic strikes, it's important for scientists to be able to quickly rely on updated models and studies. During an epidemic, you don't have much time to work. Epidemics are usually short. If people work with different and poorly defined material, we're never able to put all the studies together to compare them. The role of a reference collection like EVA is to provide very quickly to as many partners as possible the same products, very well identified, so that they can do research with them. The French Institute has also been able to provide assistance to developing countries by sending reliable and simple-to-use testing kits. The EVA database allows us to prepare and react to develop diagnostic tools that are freeze-dried so they're stable at room temperature. They can be sent without being refrigerated. They're usable, extremely stable over time, and laboratories can use them under conditions that are similar to those that are in the field. Let's now head to Cambridge to check out one of the world's biggest data collection centres for COVID-19. The European Molecular Biology Laboratory, or EMBL, is one of the world's most important centres for the study of molecular biology. 
home to the European Bioinformatics Institute. In April, a project called the European COVID-19 Data Platform was launched to share the latest data on SARS-CoV-2. Gathering information from research centres and hospitals, once analysed, it's made available to the rest of the international scientific community. Just over 50,000 people from over 170 countries that have accessed it. So it shows you, you know, the, the fact that it is globally accessible and actually used as well. We have had over 2 million web requests that are coming to the, through the portal as well. And we have over 90,000 scientific articles available for download and, and, and well, research. Data such as genome sequences, proteins and microscope observations are all uploaded onto a portal. The platform also includes analytical tools that enable researchers to study different sources of information. The focus is on uh, new data that, that are being produced from scientific studies, from public health labs, from clinics, um, and bringing all of that together into a valuable whole um, that, that, that where, you, where the user who's consuming the data and building their, their science on top uh, can navigate, access, and, and, and move around within the, uh, within the data that are all in one place. The COVID-19 data portal is seen as a first step to creating a wider network of SARS-CoV-2 data hubs. Eventually, the information from these should provide a comprehensive picture for the global research community. The head of the European Molecular Biology Laboratory says improving data and knowledge sharing will be key. Our ambition is first to harvest all the data which is already deposited in uh, uh, central databases and bring that together in the portal, then connect to the, uh, the, genetics, which is, uh, uh, the genetics data which is gathered right now, and then finally to connect to the clinical data which is out there. So the usage is going up quite quickly um, and the uptake is, is great and we get a, a lot of feedback and a lot of interest for f uh, future collaboration. So it's um, it's science working at its best. Scientists in Cambridge are clear that the fight against COVID-19 is a global one, but they're confident sharing data in this way will shorten the path to a vaccine. <laughs>